Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. We begin tonight with breaking news. Police are responding to a report of a disturbance in North Fargo. Thank you so much for joining us. Mike has the evening off. Witnesses say they heard gunshots about 15 minutes ago and saw a man running from the scene. Police are currently setting up a perimeter at 10th Avenue North and 10th Street North. We have a crew on the scene. Stick with Valley News Live and valleynewslive.com for updates on this story. The valley is a bit soggy. Here is live video from storm chaser Eric Whitehill. He's monitoring storms south and east of Fargo. The storms last night were sure strong, and there could be another round of strong storms in parts of the valley tonight. Let's go right over to Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson, who's got the latest. Hutch? All right, thanks so much, Andrea. As we take a look at the radar, we see uh, storms have established themselves east of Fargo along Highway 10 and points north into Lakes Country. These storms have been doing what we call training, forming and moving over the same area as previous storms for the last couple of hours. Flash flooding is going to be a concern. In fact, it's taken place. In fact, some elevated water totals uh, showing up alongside the roads and ditches on Highway 59 uh, and, and in Lakes Country. Right now, we also have a flood warning south of Fargo for parts of Richland, Wilkin, Cass, and Clay counties. Flooding will be the primary risk from these storms, although we are monitoring them, as you saw Eric Whitehill uh, keeping his eyes on that. Rainfall estimates on this storm over the last uh, several scans, actually the present rainfall rate uh, and accumulations upwards of four to four and a half inches of rain out in parts of Becker County. Another line of storms out to the west is progressing eastward. We'll continue to monitor that. The risk for us in eastern North Dakota will be hail to around an inch or an inch and a half in gusty winds. There is a tornado risk in southern and central Minnesota that's taking place right now. We'll have hour by hour details in your forecast coming up, Andrea, here in a few moments. All right, thank you so much, Hutch. And you can stay up to date on the weather conditions where you are anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team weather app to get the latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store. When cleaning up after the storms, most of us can pick up a branch or two, even shingles or siding that come off our house. But when it comes to trees that may have fallen during the storms, that's a different story. As Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker shows us, where your tree fell could determine when you can get someone to come and remove it. This is really sad. It's a beautiful oak tree. It's over 100 years old. And the winds last night it just crushed it and it just destroyed their garage. The severe weather that's blown through the area over the past several days has left a path of destruction. My wife wakes up at like 5.30 in the morning to, to work out. Um, she has her coffee first, so she came into our kitchen and looked uh, through her kitchen window and this is what she saw. Scott Bjorkland says the first thing he and his wife did was call their insurance agent, who then led them to Bear's Tree Service. I was amazed. Um, they got out here really fast. Uh, they did a good job. Um, <clears throat> obviously we can't uh, can't have that sitting there very long. Owner Bear Bowles says though everyone wants their yard cleaned up, they're using a system to prioritize jobs. Any of the ones that have immediate da damage and anything that's kind of would be a hazard for sure we go and take care of that first and get that get that taken care of then I get to the other customers later as soon as I can. Which means it could be weeks before some people get their yards cleaned up. Bowles also says be aware that scammers will be out looking to make a quick buck off of these storms. So do your homework before signing up with a company. Be cautious and look into them. I mean, use the internet and, you know, check into that company and make sure they're a legit company with good insurance. In Fargo, Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. Over in Minnesota, residents were still picking up the pieces this afternoon in Lake Park after winds were clocked at over 90 miles per hour there. Trees were snapped in half all over town. One fell right into a sleeping woman's home. Public works crews were out clearing roads and hauling away debris. Christy Van Vickel says she and her kids crouched in the basement during the early morning hours until the storm blew through. I'm very... Very thankful nothing happened to my kids and I and my, my family, I should say, and anyone else, because we are all really good friends. It was really scary. Lake Park Audubon High School also had extensive damage to its baseball and football fields. The city of Holly is still cleaning up after this weekend's storms. Public Works Director Jerry Cluck says they're still picking up debris that residents are putting out on the curb. A massive cottonwood is still laying in one resident's backyard, missing their house by just a few feet. 
Mayor Gary Johnson says the best thing to come out of all the weekend's nasty weather is that nobody was hurt or killed. A school resource officer who was arrested for drunk driving has resigned. Fargo Police Chief David Todd says Wes Libner resigned voluntarily. Libner was arrested for DWI early this month on Highway 10 near Hawley. This wasn't Libner's first run-in with the law. He has had several other incidents, including careless driving and speeding. The parents of a six-year-old girl are reunited tonight after believing their daughter was missing, but she really wasn't. The South Fargo family received a call that their daughter was not in the summer school ELL program this morning. The family knew their child took the bus. School staff and police searched the area near Ed Clapp Elementary. After nearly two hours, they found the child where she was supposed to be, in the school, but in the wrong classroom with the wrong name tag on. I would like to give the thanks for Fargo Police Department officers because they helped me yeah. to find the, my daughter. So I give the thanks for school too, so because school teacher, they call me. The school district says it was a simple mix-up and the child picked up the wrong name tag, which led them to thinking she was not there. A Crookston man charged in connection with the death of another man following a bar fight has landed in more trouble. 29-year-old Brock Strawman is awaiting trial on a first-degree manslaughter charge. Now, as Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us, he's had more legal troubles. On Christmas Day, John Torres told his fiance he was jumped in a fight outside this Crookston bar. He died a week later from a head injury. In March, Brock Strauman was charged with first-degree manslaughter, assault, and disorderly conduct in connection with Torres's death. Strauman was out of jail awaiting trial on the condition he stays out of bars and liquor stores. However, Friday night, Strauman was arrested at T&J's bar in Red Lake Falls. Sheriff Mitch Bernstein says their dispatcher received a call at 6.30 p.m. from the bartender saying Strauman was in the bar causing problems and he wanted Strauman to leave. He was intoxicated and kind of causing a disturbance in there, maybe trying to start fights and stuff, so a deputy responded. Um, identified Mr. Stroman as the guy that was that was causing problems. Deputies recognized that Stroman was in violation of his conditions of release from the Crookston charges, and he was arrested without incident. Stroman is currently being held in the Polk County Jail on a contempt of court charge. In Crookston, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Strawman appeared in Polk County Court this afternoon on a contempt of court charge for violating the conditions of his release. A breathalyzer test at the time of his arrest showed Strawman's blood alcohol level at .278, more than three times the legal limit. The judge ruled that Strawman must post $4,000 bail and keep the conditions of his initial release or post $40,000 bail to be released without any conditions. A measure to legalize recreational marijuana will not be on the November ballot this year. Spokesperson Tony Magnall says the group came up just short. They received 85 percent of the signatures they needed. More than 100 unpaid volunteers from around the state had collected signatures. Magnall says the group plans to complete the signature drive. However, if they can submit enough valid signatures by March, the measure will appear on the ballot in 2018. Today was a historic day in terms of protecting our community from further flooding. The Army Corps of Engineers, the cities of Fargo and Moorhead, and the Diversion Authority agreed to be partners and build a massive flood protection project. Today's official signing ceremony means the Corps and the federal government are committing to the controversial diversion. It will include a 30-mile-long channel which will divert floodwaters around the FM metro area when needed. The agreement also means work can soon get underway on the first part of the project, the Diversion Inlet. That is to be built south and east of Horace. The diversion is estimated to cost more than $2 billion. It's a unique way to work out, and people are doing it right here in the Valley. How you can get involved with Zero Gravity Fitness later on Valley News Live at 6. Heading into your Monday night, a tornado risk southern and eastern Minnesota, flooding risk along Highway 10 and points south while a line of thunderstorms in the central Dakotas moves toward the valley. Updates in your forecast are next.